Goodness me. Wow. Hello, I'm Maddie, and today I'm off on my own little adventure to go and find out some more about our earliest polar explorers. It's a bit chilly out, so I'm wrapped up warm, but this is absolutely nothing compared to the windiest, coldest place on Earth, the Antarctic. I'm ready. <laughs> Not yet, Greg. Not yet. More on that later. <laughs> I've come to the Scott Polar Research Institute here in Cambridge to find out what some of the earliest explorers would have worn when they set off on daring scientific expeditions. Explorers like Sir Ernest Shackleton and Captain Scott. In 1901, that's over 100 years ago, they head off on a dangerous mission that would last three years. And this mission was called Discovery because Discovery was the name of their ship and they went to the Antarctic where they would undertake important scientific research and attempt to be the first to make it to the South Pole. This is a map of Antarctica, the huge frozen continent at the bottom of the world. It's the highest, driest and windiest place on Earth, but it's also the coldest. If modern day scientists want to visit, then they have to wear a lot of protective clothing. And that would look something like this. Henrietta, who knows loads about Antarctica expeditions. Right now, I am wearing what would be, I guess, a modern expedition coat. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, tell me about this. Mm -hmm. So this coat um, has been to the Antarctic. The coldest temperature ever recorded there is minus 89 degrees Celsius, so it gets really cold. You want to have a nice, big, fluffy coat to keep you warm. So it's got a number of different features that will keep you nice and warm, and one of that is the hood, which has like this nice, bendable material. You can channel it to make sure that you keep as much of your vision as possible, but you don't get cold through the wind. It's like making a little tunnel for your mm -hmm. face, so like that. Yeah, and it's got this fur on it to catch any falling snow so that it doesn't get into your face. So what's the actual jacket made? out of it feels really squashy mm -hmm. so it's made out of down mm -hmm. um much like a, a pillow or a sleeping bag that sort of thing so the little feathers yeah very soft feathers. feathers all of those little feathers trap lots of tiny bits of air in them mm -hmm. um, and it's that air which your body heats up by being close to that is what eventually keeps you nice and toasty a quick interruption from us back here at home and now it is greg's time to shine Whoa. who as you can see is sporting his own adventure clothing and this all-in-one piece is similar to the modern scientific kit that they've got at the museum but Greg how is this keeping you warm okay so it's packed full of feathers and what they do is they do do two things one is they stop the cold air outside getting in and making me cold and the second is that they trap my body heat inside so my body heat can't escape but we thought we could show you how that works using a thermal imaging camera I've got my camera set up here. Um, I'm just going to put it into thermal imaging mode. And just like that, Greg has seemingly changed color. Uh, Greg, uh, would you say you're pretty warm? I'm so toasty. <laughs> So we can see here that Greg looks yellow. That means that he is warmer than his surroundings that are a bit more pinky, purpley blue. However, we know that those downy feathers are trapping in Greg's body heat and we can see that. Greg, if you were to open up your jacket, let's see how warm you are on the inside. Oh. Whoa! So there you can see Greg is bright white. That means that's where Greg is really, really hot. However, now he's opened his coat, his body heat is escaping. Slowly but surely, Greg will start to cool down. So if you want to keep that body heat trapped inside, you better do that jacket back up again. <laughs> warm again. <laughs> and now Greg will stay toasty and warm. And that is how a down jacket works. But over 100 years ago, explorers wouldn't have had coats as technical as this. No, so what no. would they have used? So they would have used natural fibres like wool or maybe even furs as well. It kind of depends on the explorer exactly what they were using. Okay, so um, let's see some examples. <laughs> this is the coat that they might have used maybe in the 1920s or at the beginning of the 20th century. So it's quite an old one, um, but it's made out of wool. 
it's really heavy yeah and it feels it feels quite smart it as is well. smart yeah so lots of coats and clothes and this sort of thing for antarctic explorers i'll give you a hand thanks <laughs> were made by burberry in the uk Burberry, um, a very smart fashion designer. Yeah, so you might have heard of them. It's definitely heavy, mm. it's itchy, Yeah. it's nowhere near as cosy as our modern day coats. No, by, by no means. They didn't have that um, trapping of the down that our modern day coat has. So instead, you would have had to have layered up underneath with yeah. lots of thin layers. Yeah. So protective clothing was vital for the early explorers like Shackleton and Scott because they had to protect themselves from the harsh weather conditions to be able to go about their scientific research. They took loads of notes uh, and photographs, they collected fossils and animal specimens and they even observed emperor penguins. So I've got some examples of mm -hmm. what the likes of Scott and Shackleton would have worn on their hands. Yes. Yeah. Can you take me through the different layers? Mm -hmm. So this is the base layer. Okay. Um, and these are silk gloves. So it's quite surprising because they're really thin. Mm -hmm. um, but what silk does is that it's it's this very natural fibre, obviously, and it traps the um, heat of your hand really close in next to it. So although you wouldn't want just the silk gloves on their own, they're a really good kind of base layer for you to have. But this isn't going to be enough. No, not by any means. So you <laughs> need at least one more layer on. Those are these uh, knitted mittens. So your fingers, they're so small that when you get really cold, your body kind of loses the heat to those fingers because it's trying to keep you nice and warm in, in mm -hmm. your core in the middle of your body. That's kind of a dangerous thing for your hands. They can get really badly damaged if they get too cold. So mm -hmm. the next best thing to do is to put them in a mitten and then all of your fingers can keep each other warm. So I'm putting all of my fingers in their own little sleeping bag mm -hmm. so they yeah. can sort of benefit from each other's heat. Yes, exactly that. And your thumb is just going to have to make do on its own. Yeah. <laughs> but I have got another layer here. So these are kind of sheepskin and they're nice and fluffy on the inside. So again, it's all about trapping that heat in next to your hands, next to your fingers. And so having that fluffy stuff mm -hmm. does exactly the same as the wool. It traps in as much air as possible and keeps you nice and toasty. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> it gets quite tight. <laughs> I, I can barely move my hands. Yeah, and that's the problem they would have had. Sometimes as well on expeditions they were doing scientific work, which was really difficult because it often involved a lot of moving your hands in a very neat, fine way. Actually, we are, we are sat in front of the emperor penguin right mm -hmm. now. Yeah. They were collecting eggs, They were right? collecting eggs. One of the theories that they wanted to prove or disprove on some of these expeditions was whether um, birds were related to dinosaurs. And so in order to do that, they decided to collect some eggs and then they could see the developmental stages of the penguin and see whether that compared to how they imagined dinosaurs. I, I, I cannot imagine trying to lift a precious <laughs> egg with these gloves with on. These gloves on, yeah. So what's the difference between this and the sort of materials that we have now? Mm -hmm. So we've got these gloves, which are the first things that you wear. They're a bit thicker though than the silk gloves that you have. Yeah. And they also have um, this shiny almost outer layer and that keeps them um, warm even if it is windy. So you'll see already it's a lot thicker and it will keep you a lot warmer just on its own. And so I can wiggle all my fingers but I've certainly got more protection than when I was just wearing this. Mm -hmm. But if it got really really cold then you might wear one of these as well. So we still have mittens today but they're a slightly different material so these are a fleece and that's a nice thinner material so your hands don't get so stiff that you can't do anything but mm -hmm. it still keeps them nice and warm. But it wasn't just protective clothing that the explorers needed to take with them when they were heading out into the unknown. They had to take everything that they needed to survive. Tents, skis, snowshoes for themselves and their horses, but also food and drink. Like behind me right here, we've got some mustard, soup, and even a biscuit that has been on an expedition to the Antarctic. It's probably a bit out of date now though. We're moving on to goggles now, and can you help me put these ones yeah, on? Yeah, he's great, these ones. Okay, so they're 1920s style goggles. Okay, I'm going to do a spin hand. They're very green, as you can see, so they make everything look a bit sick. Yeah, yeah. the world is suddenly sort of turned a, a shade of lime green. Yeah, it's Why? quite a strange tint. 
So it really protects your eyes from the sun and okay. in the Antarctic it can be sunny 24 hours a day in the summer mm-hmm. um, because it's so far south. So it's really important that you protect your eyes because as well as it being sunny all the time, the sunlight also bounces off the ice and the snow and the sea and all of that sort of stuff. Okay. So it's really, really bright. If you expose your eyes to, to too much brightness, yeah. you can suffer from something called snow blindness, which is basically like sunburn for your eyes. Um, and it's incredibly painful. So would Scott and Shackleton have won these? Yeah, it was kind of a personal preference. Mm-hmm. So Scott preferred ones that were made out of wood okay. um, and they just had like tiny little slits in them rather than the green. Um, and that again would like minimise the amount of sunlight that reached your eyes. But Shackleton really liked green goggles. That was his <laughs> thing. <laughs> he wore them as well. So we actually have a pair of his goggles behind us here. So let's take these ones okay. off. Oh, yeah. <laughs> the world isn't green anymore. <laughs> actually, can I try something? I'm going to put the goggles here as well. There you go. So you can get a sense <laughs> of just how green everything is. <laughs> So this is how Shackleton would have seen um, the Antarctica when he was when he was exploring there. Mm-hmm. Cool. So these might be for more familiar to you if you've okay. been skiing. Yes, definitely. Um, and they're that really chunky style, <laughs> and they wrap right around your head as well. So they're really good if it's very windy because they stop the wind from kind of getting in and whistling past your eyes. And it also means that you've got a much bigger field of vision. Hey, well, these are pink. <laughs> yeah, so maybe it's like a different colour again. Um, You're right about that field of vision, though. I definitely see from here all the way around to here. I feel less confined. Yeah, it's much more great. like just having pink coloured eyes yeah. <laughs> than these ones. So I've seen the jacket, the gloves and the goggles, but that's not all a polar explorer will wear. They have to wear a lot of layers. And what's it like to wear all of that at the same time? Well, let's find out. On the left, I'm trying on the old fashioned clothes in the style of Shackleton and Scott. And on the right, the modern expedition kit. You'll notice there are a lot more layers to the older style of outfit and they're much harder to get on. Oh, don't get stuck. In comparison, the new clothes are lightweight, cozy, and much more practical. In fact, I think I'm done. I'm ready. Over here, I'm still tackling the three layers of gloves. So much so, Henrietta has to help me get them and the jacket on. Wow. <laughs> Goodness me, how anybody did anything, I've got no idea. This is extraordinary. I haven't even got shoes on. I know which style I prefer. Come on then, let's go. Trying on all of this modern polar expedition clothing and comparing it to the old stuff has made me realise just quite how much more difficult it would have been for those early explorers. To think that the likes of Scott and Shackleton got closer to the South Pole than anybody had ever done before when they were on their discovery mission is amazing, especially given they were wearing such heavy, uncomfortable clothes. It really was an incredible achievement. Well, as I'm dressed for a polar mission, I might as well go on one. This way to the Antarctic. Or was it this way? I should probably find out first. If you've enjoyed this video, make sure you subscribe and of course, stay curious.